It's Liam Killen, and today we have a classic demo review style video of this. This is the Go Mixer Pro 10 or Pro X, which is the newest of Roland's Go Mixer Pro series. The first thing that I want to say is that this video is not sponsored. Roland sent me this, but they are in no way influencing my thoughts and opinions on it. We're going to take a look at design and features with some examples of how it sounds. This YouTube channel focuses on synths and machines. so. Those are the examples that we're gonna be hearing for the most part. There's one thing that I dislike about the Go Mixer Pro 10, which we'll get into later in the video as well. I'm also gonna be giving you a few examples of how I'm using it within my own workflow. It's designed specifically to simplify your streaming setup while enhancing the audio quality at the same time, which I think it does a really good job of doing. So. It's a double win. It doesn't really get any more straightforward than this either. It's a plug and go live performance and streaming sort of deal. It's also worth mentioning that you could use this plug and play with native video apps as well. So that way you could pre-record performances and upload them at a later time. I personally have been using it a bunch with TikTok. Let's take a look at the design. It's about the size of my hand. We've got five smooth knobs here. They're nice quality. There's this little bump here. This is actually to insert four AAA batteries. The batteries are actually only necessary if you're using a mic that requires phantom power. Otherwise you use this cable to plug into your phone, in which case it's powered by your phone, which is pretty awesome. If you do use a mic with phantom power, apparently they last for four hours, which is not bad. And your phone goes right here. It fits really well horizontally, just like that. So it comes with a USB cable. I just plug in through the back via USB. And then this end will connect right into your phone. And so now it's completely powered. As you can see, the light goes on here. That's how you know it's powered by your phone. Little pro tip right here, you have to make sure that your phone is on and active in order for it to power the Go Mixer Pro. Let's take a look now at inputs. There is a mic input right here, which is controlled by this knob. As you can see, it's labeled. As I mentioned before, you could use mics that require phantom power. So the switch for that is right here. It's also worth mentioning that the headphone headset input right here takes a microphone from a TRRS jack. That being your standard built-in mic on consumer headphones like the Apple ones. And here is the knob control for that as well. Guitar or bass is right there, which is controlled by this knob. There is a loopback switch right here, which will reroute audio coming from your phone back in over USB as an input. That being said, you're probably not gonna have to worry about that because there's not too many apps that are able to do this. There's also a stereo keyboard input, which is controlled by this knob right here. So yeah, there's an option of going mono or stereo for that. So the instrumentation is obviously just a suggestion. You could plug in anything you want into any of these jacks. You have the option of recording directly into your your phone into apps like GarageBand for free. You simply just plug in this adapter into your phone and it'll pick up signal from the Go Mixer Pro 10. Let's test out a few instruments just to see how these preamps actually sound. A lot of this depends on the mic that you're using, but that does sound pretty clean. Is it professional studio quality? I'm gonna go with no, but it definitely does do the job of conveniently enhancing your audio quality in your streaming setup. Let's try out a synth. I have the OP1 set up here. Also, you'll notice that the phone is no longer plugged in. If I want, I could just power it by battery. I do suggest powering for your phone because this is a little bit of a waste of batteries, but just, just to show you the example. Before moving on, I should also mention that it comes with three adapters as well. So you have this one, USB, standard eighth inch adapter. This is just convenient and something you might need depending on the device that you're using with the Go Mixer Pro 10. There's also this adapter as well. I'm not 100% sure what it is, but I'll put it on the screen right here. There's also a manual made specifically for the smart app setup. So if you're stuck anywhere and you need some help to figure this out, I left a link for that in the description as well. So that just gives us an idea of the sound quality that we're dealing with right here. No problems there, it sounds fine. There's several inputs too, right? So there's a lot of flexibility there. You could record a full band live if you want, which 
Unfortunately, I couldn't demonstrate right here, right now. Here's how I use it in my streaming setup as a music producer and content creator. I do informative synth and machine streams on TikTok, so I need to explain things while I'm playing the synths. So I would have a mic set up. Oftentimes I'll just plug in one synth into guitar and the other one into keyboard. If I have a more elaborate setup, I could plug that into a separate mixer and then just go out of the output of that mixer into the Go Mixer Pro 10 to live stream. I think that devices like the Go Mixer Pro 10 are just becoming more and more important to compete for people's attention on social media platforms. We're in a new world of content now where platforms are demanding more and more content faster and faster. So you gotta be real quick with it and the Go Mixer Pro 10 is perfect for this new era. Platforms like TikTok, Instagram, even YouTube now with their new shorts. Instead of having to get your computer involved in your performance and content creation process, you could just do it all through your phone. And now with pro quality audio, anywhere. A lot of people in my niche that are streaming on platforms like Instagram and TikTok are just doing it through their phone, which takes them a pain down. So this sort of device just puts you ahead of the game and I would presume that in the near future, pretty much everyone's gonna have something like this. And this brings me to my one dislike and that my friends is this little slot here if you place your phone horizontally like this it's fine the filming angle is no problem so talking about all this fast content now it's all in vertical format so your phone would be placed like this tiktok sort of started this trend so tiktok is vertical uh, Instagram Reels is vertical, YouTube Shorts is vertical. It looks like it's becoming the new norm, at least for now. And so if I place my phone vertically like this, you can see that the angle is sort of tilted upwards. It doesn't work for that vertical format. One of the most prominent video application formats right now. Unless I take like a guitar pick and put something janky back there, which, I don't know, it's a bit, it's a bit ghetto. It's just really tough to get a proper angle. It's not so flexible in that regard. And so now I have to get another tool involved, like maybe one of these to place my phone on. I'm hoping that they catch up with this one. Thank you guys so much for being here. This is a bit of a different video for me. I usually focus on creative gear like synths, machines, electronic music production. So if you're looking for demos, reviews, and tutorials in that subject, you know where to look. I hope that you subscribe. Thanks again, and hopefully see you guys really soon.